Shalom everyone to Living with the Times. We are continuing to discuss the current events in Israel and we are doing it by connecting to the Torah portion of the week. This coming week is Parshat Lech Lecha and amazingly enough in this Torah portion a war is described. Some call it even the first world war. There were four kings against five kings. And they fought their battles, including here in Israel. And one of the kings was the king of Sidon. And he was defeated. Sidon was where Avram's nephew, Lot, lived. And we're told that Lot is taken captive. And along with him, many of the women and other people, they're taken captive. Avram is informed of this. And he takes his students, 318 students, followers, and they pursue the retreating armies with all of the captives, including Lot, all the way up to Damascus. And Avraham is able to defeat the forces and to get all of the captives back. So obviously this story amazingly is uh, current events. Right now there is something like 200 captives in Gaza from the horrific Simcha Torah massacre. In this story in the Torah, Avram is, here he's still Avram, but he's called Avram HaIvri, Avram the Hebrew. Now, many times, most of the times, Avram is just referred to as his name, Avram. Here it says Avram HaIvri. The word Ivri, which we translate as Hebrew, Avram the Hebrew, but it comes from the root to cross over, la'avor, to cross over, to traverse, to transcend, to go beyond. And Avram gets his name because he crossed over the Euphrates River in order to make his way to the land of Israel. So he's called Avram Ha'ivri. Even deeper, he's called the Hebrew, the one who transcends, really, all of the norms of the day. The world was, was pagan. Everyone was idol worshippers. And Avram crossed over into a new place. All of the world stood on one side, and Avram crossed over and stood on the other side. So, but why here is he called Ha'ivri? So we're told that Avram had many qualities, but the greatest quality of Avram was his chesed. That's what he was known as. He and Sarah had an open tent. They received visitors from all over. They welcomed them. They treated them well. They fed them. And Avram's chesed shows through so much of his life. And yet, here... Avram has to go to war. He has to chase after the enemy and get the captives back. And here he's, he's called Avram Ha'ivri because he's able to cross over his major attribute of chesed, of loving kindness, and take on what's called gevura, strength and might. And we see that Avram did this many times. He stood up to his father, who was an idol worshiper. He stood up to Nimrod, who threw him into a burning furnace. Many of the ten tests of Avram was he had to show his gevura. But still his, his essence was very much chesed. And so this relates very much to the people of Israel. We are a compassionate people. 
despite what all the papers say, there is no army in the world that tries harder not to hurt civilians. So many countries who seem to think they have the right to lecture us, if you look at their histories, they're not uh, shining examples of, in the same circumstances, how they in war perhaps treated civilians. So we're a compassionate people, and yet we find ourselves at war with a incredibly cruel enemy that publicly has no problem announcing to the world that their purpose is to destroy Israel and take back the land of Israel. And we saw what would happen if they were allowed to do it on a big scale. Just two weeks ago, we saw what would happen. In the Haggadah of Pesach, towards the end, we opened the door for Eliyahu and Navi, Elijah the prophet, and we, we say, Shvo chamadcha ala goyim shelo yaducha. Pour out your wrath on the nations that don't know you. So it should be clarified, this is not talking about all the nations. This is talking about the nations that are trying to destroy Israel. So we ask God, pour out your wrath on the nations. And one of the Hasidic rabbis said, quite, we could take this quite literally, that we say to God, God, we're a compassionate people. If, if, if you need to pour out your wrath, then, then, then you do it. But here we find ourselves in a situation, war is not, is not a pretty thing, and it's forced upon us, and yet we now have to become like Avram HaIvri, and our chesed, we have to be able to cloak ourselves in gevura and do what has to be done. And the truth is that would be the greatest chesed, not only to the Jewish people, but truthfully to the Palestinians themselves, who are very much victims to this fanatical hatred of those who are leading them now. And so not just the Palestinians, not just Israel, but the whole world needs us to be victorious over these powers of, of evil. We need once and for all the entire world to defeat the, the scourge of terrorism. It would be the greatest chesed. And so right now we need to become like Avram HaIvri. The whole world needs to cloak themselves with gevura in order for us to make peace. There's, there's great significance that the peace treaties that were made just a few years ago with a number of Arab countries is called the Abraham Accords. Because once different Arab countries come to the realization that not only can't they defeat us, but by having peace with us, they will also benefit. So we'll end this segment with a, a heartfelt prayer that all of our captives right now are returned to us safely and quickly and that the entire Jewish people and the entire, call it enlightened world, gets behind Israel and we must defeat this enemy of humanity, the, the enemy of civilization that would do such things as was done two weeks ago. May we be successful, and after that, we will have peace.